Hello everyone, this is our group's presentation and my name is Ma Jin Kun and my group's, group's members name is Li Guang Yu and Ren Zhong So we are going to talk about AC and DC So first for my part, I'm going to talk about the principle of generating alternating current and direct current So first, I'm going to talk about the law of electromagnetic induction Actually, the magnetic flux in the closed loop changes with time and there is inevitably an induced potential in the line graph. We call this phenomenon electromagnetic induction. The induced potential in the coil will tend to change the magnetic flux in the tissue coil. We can see in this formula, the intensity of the electric field is equal to the flux per unit time. There are two ways to change the magnetic flux. In this part, we can talk about the relationship between electromotive force and magnetic flux. In the windings of the transformer and the motor, the change in the magnetic flux may be that the magnetic field strength fluctuates with time or the magnetic flux does not change and the coil rotates. For both ways, when the magnetic flux change, since the changing speed is also changing because of the angle, we get different electric field in different periods of time. But in total calculation, we discovered that the average electromotive is a constant equals to the maximum value of the electromotive divided by square root of 2. In the third part, we are going to talk about the motion node in the EMF. If the magnetic field is constant, the conductors constituting the coil cut the magnetic lines of force, causing the flux linkage of the coil to change with time. Then in this case, the electromotive will equal to the multiplication of magnetic field strength, length of the conductors, and the speed of the cutting. These three elements. We can see in this formula. For the first, fourth, fourth part, we are going to talk about the law of electromagnetic force. Current carrying conductors must receive force in the magnetic field. We can analysis the direction of the force by putting our left hand out. Let the electric field's magnetic induction line go through our hands from the palm to the back, and let the fingers except the thumb point to the moving direction of the conductor. So now the thumb will be pointing to the direction of the magnetic field force. Now we are going to see a video, and we are going to talk about the, the principle of the AC generator, the alternator. How does an alternator work? On the workhouse of the, it is capable to generate AC power at a specific frequency. It is also called a synchronous generator. Electricity is produced in alternators by electromagnetic induction. To generate electricity in the coil, either the coil should be rotated with respect to magnetic field, or a magnetic field should rotate with respect to the coil. In the case of alternator, the latter approach is used. Rotor and armature coils are the two main parts of an alternator. The rotor produces a rotating magnetic flux. Armature coils are stationary, and rotating magnetic flux associated with the rotor induces electricity in the armature coils. This kind of rotor shown here is known as salient pole rotor. For gaining better insight of its working, let's consider a rotor with just four poles. You can see, rotor coils are excited with a DC power source. Magnetic field produced around it will be as shown. The rotor is made to rotate by a prime mover. This makes the rotor flux also rotate along with it, at the same speed. Such a revolving magnetic flux now interjects armature coils, which is fitted around the rotor. This will generate an alternating EMF across the windings. Here is a slowed down version of rotor stator interaction. You can see. For this four pole system, when the rotor turns half revolution, the induced EMF takes one complete circle. 
Okay. Now for the second part of my topic, I'm going to talk about how the DC power generation. So there are two ways to generate DC power. First is to use chemical ba battery to generate DC power, and the second is to transform AC to DC power. So in the first way, we can see from the class, we have to use the chemical battery like this. Use the, all the chemical, uh, chemical reaction to create a small closed loop circuit. And then we can create DC power. And for the second part, to transform DC to AC, and which is the uh, specific one, the, uh, the important ways that I think to talk. In this part, we are going to use choking coil. And this is very important equipment. You, by using this, this equipment, we can transform AC power to DC power. So here we are using a pen to show. So first, these two circle is where the power will, the AC power will input. So when the when the AC power is in this wave, which is means that this is the positive terminal and this is the uh, negative terminal. So the electricity will go in this way. But this coil will, will let the electricity go again, and then the power will go like this, and then output. But it will not go in this way because of this equipment. It will stop the electricity. Then when the wave changed to this, the terminal will change like this one will be changed to negative and this terminal will change to positive terminal. And now the electricity will go in this way this way and then output so now the electricity are still going through this direction so this equipment will let the electricity with the same direction all along the trans 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 tra 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 of the electricity although the power supply is AC which will change a lot change frequently but when the power goes through this equipment, the choking coil, the electricity direction will be the same. So it can be changed to the DC power. And now this is all the part that I'm going to talk. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Jin Zhong. This is the second part of the presentation, and I will introduce the application of DC and AC. Firstly, I will introduce the application of the DC power. As we all know, the DC has a variety of applications in our daily life, but there are two applications that are most common. The first one is the DC in electronics. DC could be used in any device that has a circuit board because the chips within these devices require a steady unidirectional flow of electrons to operate and store data. The example of this application can be your smartphone and your computer. Even when you look at a cuboid on your laptop charger, you should know that it is an adapter that converts AC to DC. Thus, it can be concluded that most electronic products in our lives are powered by DC power. The second one is the DC generator. Although it's not ready yet compared to the AC generators, there are still several advantages of this kind of generator. For example, they have good cool startup and speed regulation characteristics. They can generate a power that can be easily used in the circuit trace and most importantly, they are stable and environmental friendly. Other applications like low voltage DC used in transportation, steel and specialty metal manufacturing, metal finishing and planting, and industrial battery charging are also can be found in our lives. Then I will talk about the application of AC. 
Although we have talked about the DC power that was broadly used in our daily lives, what you should also know is that the DC is converted from AC, and without the AC power, there can't be easy access to the power we used every day. But here comes the question. Where does the AC power come from and how it was transported? The answer is that it is generated by the AC generator and is transported with a method called the long distance power transmission, which is also can be called as the high voltage transmission. And this method is also the main application of the AC power at the meanwhile. High voltage transmission is a way to transmit the output voltage of generator through transformer in power plant. The reason why we chose this method to transport AC but not DC is the Joule's law, which can be expressed as formula Q equals to I squared times R times T. That is, if you use a high voltage, the current could be small, which leads to a small amount of Q, which means that a small amount of electrical energy is lost in the form of heat. The advantages of this method is apparent. That is, save the energy and improves the efficiency. And this is the end of my part. The next part is going to talk about the future development of the DC and AC. No, this is my part. Future development of ADC and AC. Nowadays, AC occupies the electricity transmission field. The advantage of AC transmission is that the generation of electricity is AC, and the voltage of AC can be easily changed. However, in the future, the advantage of DC will appear since the application of the rectifier. So, the electrical grid will be formed by the comprehensive utilization of AC and DC. First, let us see the future application of DC high voltage direct current HVDC. HVDC electric power transmission system uses DC for the bulk transmission of electrical power in contrast with the more common alternating current systems. For long distance transmission, HVDC systems may be less expensive and suffer lower electrical losses. A comprehensive HVDC system includes a conversion system transmission system, and the connection system. Conversion system has two major equipment, including the converter and the converter transformer. Converter transformer changes the voltage of AC to a certain voltage that can be used by the converter, and the converter changes the AC to DC. Next is the transmission system, which is formed by cable. The transmission system used in HVDC is more efficient than AC. HVDC requires less conductor per unit distance than the AC line, as there is no need to support three phases and there is no skin effect. The last part is connection system, which is used to link with different AC and DC system for the further use of electricity. Next, we discuss about the superconductivity. Superconductivity is a phenomenon that the resistance of some materials would change to zero when cooled down below a critical temperature. When the first finding of superconductivity, the critical temperature is very low approaching to the absolute zero. But with time going on, the critical temperature are much higher than before. We can imagine that in the future, we have the room temperature conductors. When using these materials, only DC can be transformed because AC will generate the magnetic field, which will cause the loss of power. Finally, the smart grid system will be used in electrical transmission. Smart grid can monitor the use of electricity and make adjustments based on it. It will reduce the loss of electricity power. 
Also, it will have diverse input of power and promote the development of clean energy, such as solar and wind power. This can be done by the compatibility of AC and DC. In a conclusion, both AC and DC can be used in the future, and the smart grid will combine them to reach the best effect. Thank you very much.